Hey guys, I know it's a month out, but I'm already really excited for Thanksgiving. It's one of my favorite holidays. I love the food, of course, but I also love the tra our tradition of giving thanks to God. We all take time thanking God for all the blessings he's given us in the past year. But the thing that never changes is thanking God for giving us his son, Jesus. We can never thank Jesus enough for all he's done for us. What did Jesus do for us? That's our big picture question. Do you know the answer? That's right. Jesus lived a sinless life, died on the cross, and rose from the dead. And remember, each part of that answer is extremely important. Because without all those things, we would not have salvation from sin. Because Jesus fulfilled every part of God's great plan, we have hope for eternal life. Faith in Jesus makes us new creations that will live with God for eternity. Okay, so for the past few weeks we've been learning about Jesus' ministry. Jesus went to Jerusalem and they accepted him as his king. They hoped and they believed that Jesus would overthrow the Roman government and become their earthly king. Last week we learned about how the religious leaders hated Jesus and tried to trick him. But Jesus spoke with wisdom and authority, which made the religious leaders hate him even more. They planned to kill Jesus, but their plan got all wrapped up in God's plan. Jesus knew he would die very soon, so he spent his last night as a free man, eating and teaching with his disciples. That's what our lesson today is about. Let's get to it. But first, let's do an activity. Hey everyone, it's the Jones family. Today we're going to be playing a game with these apples. We're going to see if we can pass them around us in a circle twice without actually dropping any. Gigi, present the apples. Okay, as you can see, they're stacked pretty high. All right, guys, so the goal is to pass as fast as you can without dropping any, okay? Okay. You ready? Okay. Like we didn't get it right that time so let's try it once more maybe this time if we put our both our hands under it we can keep we can hold on to it better without uh, the plate bending all right ready okay levi start us off again go awesome <laughs> yeah we did it all right one more time with feeling this time as fast as we can all right i think we can do it yeah, oh. we can do it. Oh. Oh, no. oh, no. All right. Well, that was a fun game. But, you know, there was another time in the Bible where Jesus passed around a plate of food. He passed around some wine and some bread. Do you know what those foods represented? Well, we're going to learn about that in today's video. All right, off to you. People of Israel were slaves in Egypt. God sent plagues or curses on the Egyptians to punish them until their Pharaoh agreed to let God's people go. During the tenth and final plague, the firstborn child of every Egyptian died. God instructed his people to put the blood of a lamb over their door so that the angel of death would know that they were God's people and would pass them over. God said that the people should celebrate every year to remember this Passover event and gave them specific instructions to when and how they should celebrate. During his last week on earth, Jesus and his disciples were in Jerusalem for the Passover celebration. On the day the Jews were supposed to kill the Passover lamb, Jesus said to Peter and John, Go and prepare us a space to have the Passover meal. Where should we prepare it? Go into town and you will see a man carrying a jug of water. Follow him into the house that he enters. Tell the owner of the house, the teacher asks that you show us the room where he and his followers may use to eat the Passover meal. He will then show you a large room upstairs. This room is ready for you. Prepare the meal there. Everything happened as Jesus had said, and they prepared the Passover meal. When Jesus arrived at the room, 
he took his place at the table with all of the apostles. He said to them, I am so excited and glad I am able to eat this last Passover meal with you before I die. For I will not eat another Passover meal with you until we are together in God's kingdom realm. But somebody will betray me. It is one of you twelve that I have eaten with and considered a close, intimate friend. What the scriptures have wrote about me will come to pass. The Son of Man must die. But for the one that betrays me, it would have been better off if he had never been born. While they were eating, Jesus gave new meaning to the elements of their meal. Take this bread and eat it. For this bread is my body, given for you. Eat and remember me. Take this and drink. For this drink is my blood, and it represents a new covenant with God and his people. It has been spilled for many, so that they may be forgiven of their sins. Later, Jesus spoke again to his disciples of what was to come. Tonight you will lose your faith and desert me. It is said in scripture, For I will kill the shepherd, and his sheep will scatter. But when I rise again, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Even if all the rest lose their faith and fall away from me, I will still live beside you, Lord. Are you sure, Peter? In fact, you will say you don't know me. You will say it three times before the rooster crows in the morning. I will never say I do not know you, Lord. You are about to die beside me. When they had finished the Passover meal, Jesus and his disciples went to the Mount of Olives, a place where Jesus likes to pray. Jesus knew that he would be arrested and would suffer. He would die on the cross to take the punishment for the sins of the whole world. But on the third day, he would rise again. At this Passover meal, Jesus showed his disciples with the bread and the drink that he is the true Passover lamb. God's people had broken the old covenant but God promised to make a new covenant to forgive sins. The new covenant says that everyone who turns away from sin and trusts in Jesus' death and resurrection will be forgiven and will have eternal life. As God's son, Jesus knew God's plan. He knew the time was coming that he would be arrested and put to death, and he was ready for it. But the timing of all this wasn't a coincidence either. Passover is a really important time for the Jewish people. It's when they celebrate how God protected them and saved them from slavery in Egypt. Now, the Passover meal is very symbolic, and certain elements of the meal represent things that remind everyone of the miracles God performed when he saved them from slavery in Egypt. Jesus' disciples would have been very familiar with all this. At this particular Passover meal, Jesus gave certain elements new meaning by having them represent his sacrifice and the miracle that would save all of us from sin. When Jesus served the bread, he said it represented his body. When Jesus was arrested and put to death, he never fought back against any of it. He willingly gave his life, gave his body for us. When Jesus passed around the cup of wine, he said it represented his blood. Generations before, the blood of a spotless, perfect lamb had been used to mark the houses of those who trusted in God, and it had saved them from death. Now, Jesus' blood saves everyone who believes in him from an even greater death. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Just as God commanded the Jewish people to remember and celebrate his deliverance of his people during Passover, Jesus commanded his disciples to remember his sacrifice when they eat the bread and drink the wine. We still do this today when we take communion. 
Now, different churches do communion differently. At KCC, we take communion together on the first Sunday of every month, and you may have done this with your families over the last couple of uh, months at home. But how we take communion isn't as important as the fact that we remember Jesus and honor his sacrifice through obedience. Sometimes obeying God can be really hard, but Jesus gives us a perfect example of how to obey God when it's hard. And that is just what our Bible verse talks about for this unit. So why don't we head over to Pastor Pete and practice it. Hey guys, you've been practicing our Bible verse for this unit? Well, let's do it together. And I got my trusty helper, Brave, to help me with the motions. So here we go, Philippians 2.8. And when he was living as a man, he humbled himself and was fully obedient to God. He obeyed even when that caused his death, death on a cross. So this verse says that Jesus was humble, but do you know what humble means? Humble means considering other people more important than yourself. And Jesus should have thought of himself as the most important person because he's the son of God, but he didn't. He considered other people more important because he loved us. And so he left his throne in heaven, came to earth, lived a sinless life, and died on the cross so that our sins could be forgiven. Because he loves us and he wants to spend forever with us. Well, that's it for this week. So make sure to go to our Facebook page, our group, or our KCC Kids and have some discussion questions. Aloha. save all of us from sin. My God is savior. Yes, dear. Sorry, I'm not on the covenant. God is 